We are standing on the edge of a precipice. A new reality, a new age of mobility is being forged right now in labs of secret innovation and on the trading floors of Wall Street. A skyborne future, once the domain of science fiction, is being built today. Two American titans, Joby Aviation and Archer Aviation, are locked in a high-stakes war to control this future, to own the very skies above our heads. In the last month, their valuations have exploded. Joby is up a staggering, almost unbelievable 100%. Archer is climbing right behind them. The market is screaming that the revolution is here. But behind the hype, behind the soaring stock prices, a secret battle is raging. A battle of fundamentally different strategies, of radical technologies, and ultimately, of survival. One of these giants might be hiding a fatal flaw, a secret crack in its armor that could send its ambitions and its investors' fortunes crashing back down to earth. And tonight, we are going to expose it all. The central question is not just who will win, it's where should an early investor place their biggest bets in a race this volatile? The answer is far more complex and far more dramatic than you could ever imagine. And you'll want to stick around for the end, because that's when we'll reveal the lesser known names, the dark horse contenders poised to swoop in and shock everyone. All right, let's dive in. The sector has ignited overnight. What we're seeing is the result of a critical inflection point. For years, this entire industry has been a collection of promises and prototypes. But now those promises are turning into reality. We've got massive government backing and, well, multiple companies releasing their technology at the same time. It's creating a whirlwind of interest, a perfect storm that is lifting the entire sector. And Joby Aviation is at the eye of that storm. Their recent 100% surge is no accident. It's been manufactured by a relentless drumbeat of success, hitting catalyst after catalyst. You know, it's one thing to hear about successful tests, it's another to imagine it. Picture yourself standing in the heart of Dubai. You look up and see a sleek, quiet aircraft that moves unlike anything you've ever seen. It takes off vertically like a helicopter, but without the deafening roar. Then its six propellers tilt forward, and it glides silently through the air like a plane. This isn't a computer rendering, it's a real aircraft flying in a commercial zone, proving the concept is viable. And it's not just demonstrations. The United States government has publicly stated that it will do whatever it takes to be the world leader in Eve to all technology. This isn't just about flying taxis anymore. This is about national security, about technological supremacy. Add to that the financial backing of an automotive giant like Toyota and you have a company firing on all cylinders. The market has been forced to turn and ask, what is going on with Joby? In this war for the skies, every army has a secret weapon. Joby's is one phrase, vertical integration. This is the absolute core of their strategy and the single biggest thing that separates them from their competition. It means Joby is building a fortress. They are producing and manufacturing everything that goes into their aircraft themselves. Every screw, every battery, every line of code, they control it all. While competitors are on the phone sourcing off-the-shelf components, Joby is just building. Now, on the surface, this strategy seems like a logistical nightmare. Incredibly expensive. Incredibly slow. A bottleneck. So how can this possibly be an advantage? because Joby has already pushed through that initial pain. They've reached a state of critical mass, and their vertical integration has transformed from a potential liability into their most powerful weapon. It gives them a terrifying speed and agility. Here's a game-changing example. Joby's engineers identified a potential limitation in their aircraft's battery range. For a competitor, solving that means months, maybe years of research and development and sourcing new tech. But at Joby, their engineers literally walked down the hall. They took one of their aircraft, pulled multiple batteries out, and replaced them with hydrogen fuel cells they had also developed. In a flash with stunning speed, they created a hybrid EVTOL, a machine that can fly 700 miles on a single refill. That wasn't a minor upgrade. It was a revolutionary leap forward, made possible by their absolute control. 
They're evolving their aircraft in real time while their competitors are stuck in supply chain quicksand. So it sounds like the race is over, a checkmate. But that's not the whole story. Because while Joby was building a fortress, their biggest rival, Archer, was building something else entirely. They were building a web. If Joby's strategy is control, Archer's is collaboration. Archer looked at the monumental task of manufacturing and asked, why build the factory when a global automotive giant can do it for us? Archer isn't going to manufacture their own product. The automotive behemoth Stellantis, parent company of Jeep, Ram and Chrysler, is going to do it for them. This completely changes the calculus. Archer gives up the fine-grained control that Joby has, but in return, they potentially gain the ability to scale up at a blinding speed. Archer is the architect. Stellantis is the master builder. And their web extends further. Archer is doing equally well as Joby on military contracts, and uh, a key part of their strategy is their partnership with the data analytics giant Palantir. This creates a powerful triangle. Archer provides the aircraft, Palantir provides the AI systems, and the military is the client for both. They're playing a different kind of chess than Joby. It seemed like a perfectly balanced, epic showdown. But then, the Whisper campaign began. A cloud of doubt formed over Archer. A devastating short report was published, and it made an explosive claim that struck at the very heart of their technology. The report's central accusation was damning. It alleged that Archer's aircraft is aerodynamically unstable, and that it cannot perform the single most critical maneuver for an EVTOL, the transition from vertical helicopter-like flight to horizontal plane-like flight. Without that transition, the entire concept is dead in the water. How the two companies respond to public challenges speaks volumes. Joby responds to doubt with overwhelming proof releasing crystal-clear, multi-angle videos of their aircraft performing the full transition flawlessly. It's irrefutable proof. Archer's response was... different. They released a new flight video, but the aircraft takes off down a runway like a regular airplane. They completely dodged the central accusation. To their critics, their refusal to show the transition was a confession. It fed directly into the short report's narrative that their design has a fatal flaw. What happened next? Joby kept up its drumbeat of positive news. Archer went quiet. The buzz turned to whispers, and those whispers are that Archer's beautiful aircraft might not be able to fly as promised. So where does that leave us? We all have this dream of hailing a flying Uber. But that's not the reality, not for a while. The unit economics and regulatory hurdles are still years away from being solved. The real prize, the multi-billion dollar prize on the table today isn't about people, it's about packages, pallets, and patience. The real race is for logistics, cargo hauling, emergency medical evacuation, and military dominance. This is a 10-year war. The potential reward for getting in early is honestly astronomical. People five years from now will look back on this moment, and it'll be like seeing Apple at $4 a share. Because you know, when an entire industry is born, the growth potential is almost limitless. The real winner here isn't Joby or Archer, it's the early investor. The person who does their research, understands the immense stakes, and gets into the game before the rest of the world fully wakes up. But we've focused on the two American titans. And in every great war, there are sleepers. Dark horses just waiting in the shadows. Vertical Aerospace. One of the most interesting is this UK-based company. They're doing all the right things, but honestly, flying completely under the radar. They completed a successful airport-to-airport -airport transit and were one of the only EVTOLs at the world's largest military air show. Yet, their stock is, arguably, completely undervalued. From a technology standpoint, they're almost neck and neck with Joby and Archer. They're hiding in plain sight. So, Yi Hang, this Chinese company is playing a completely different game. While the American companies are focused on piloted aircraft, Yi Hang is going all in on autonomous flight. They've already received safety certifications from the Chinese government and are, you know, actually conducting 
passenger carrying flights in several cities. They're years ahead in real world autonomous operations, but uh, they do face a huge regulatory battle to enter Western markets. Now Blade, this company is the picks and shovels play. Blade isn't building an Evtol, they're building the network. You can think of them as the Uber or Kayak of the skies. They're partnering with multiple manufacturers so they don't have to pick the winner of the technology war. If the industry succeeds, Blade is positioned to succeed with it, regardless of which aircraft is the best. The giants are watching these specialty players, and honestly, serious investors should be too. So the battle for our skies is far from over. It's really a war of control versus alliances, of proven technology versus bold promises, of American titans versus some hidden global challengers. We've given you the battle map, we've shown you the secret weapons, and we've revealed the hidden players. Now the choice is yours. We want to hear from you in the comments. After everything you've heard, where do you stand? Are you on Team Joby with its Fortress of Control, Team Archer with its Web of Alliances? Or are you maybe betting on a dark horse like the British underdog Vertical Aerospace, the Chinese innovator Yi Hang, or the network builder Blade to emerge from the shadows? The future is being written in the skies above us. The only question is, will you be watching from the ground or will you be a part of the revolution?